if you haven't already noticed, the hot chili sauce market has exploded over the past few years, to the point that one of the hottest channels on YouTube, excuse the pun, is all about hot sauces. Leading the Australian charge is past guest Renee Bunster, who joins us five years down the track to give us an update on her hot sauce empire and why she's added a tequila and pre-mixed cocktail brand to her offerings. Hmm, interesting. It's a mouth-burning episode 662 of the 14-year-old award-winning small business big marketing podcast. Well, I say welcome to a small business marketing show where successful small business owners share their souls to take your marketing straight to the lead. Now, here's your host, Mr. Tim Bowie. And welcome back to your weekly dose of Red Hot Marketing. I'm your host, Timbo Reed, and I have an insatiable curiosity for uncovering marketing ideas that help businesses just like yours to grow. And I do that by having a weekly in-depth conversation with a successful business founder or owner who has bravely walked the path before us. You infinitely more importantly are a motivated business owner ready to crank out some great marketing to build that beautiful business of yours into the empire it absolutely deserves to be. As per usual, team, there's marketing G-O-L-D dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. Hey, if you're enjoying this podcast and want a little more marketing love to help that beautiful business of yours grow, then consider joining my small business owner membership. Not only will you find over 45 marketing ideas that I've captured on video during my travels, and I add to them each week, there's also a mountain of video interviews I've done, some short video excerpts from my favorite interviews that you can watch, some productivity tool reviews to help you get more done, and the odd peek behind the scenes. Very odd, actually. Or if none of that interests you and you just like to make a contribution to the running costs of this show, then who am I to say no? Head over to patreon.com forward slash marketing podcast and a big thank you to those of you who have already joined. It's so, so appreciated. Every little bit helps to bring you the best business and marketing inspirations going around. Check out both the bronze and silver tier memberships free for seven days, no obligation over at patreon.com forward slash marketing podcast. Now, first things first, there is a language warning on this episode. So if the kids are around, I suggest locking them up for the next hour or so. Give them some water, but just make sure they don't listen to the interview. You with me? Now, during a holiday through Central America in 2011, Aussie journalist Renee Bunster fell in love with the delicious, fresh, hot sauces from that region. Upon returning home, she couldn't find anything that even came close, so like all good entrepreneurs, Renee began making her own, calling it shit the bed. I shit you not. (laughs) Friends who'd never even liked chili before were suddenly kicking down a door, and it quickly turned into a thriving business with orders coming in from all over Australia. In fact, when I first interviewed Renee in episode 401, worth going back and having a listen to, by the way, she was already selling $8,000 worth of her hot sauce a day and was the number one selling hot sauce on Amazon Australia ahead of the giant Sriracha. (laughs) That is no mean feat. Realising she was onto something, she sent a load over to the US and the Shit the Bed brand quickly became the number one hot chili sauce on Amazon USA as well. Amazing story. Today, the Bunster Hot Sauce Empire is thriving with new flavours added, supported by a huge national distribution, including Woolworths. Plus, Renee has extended the brand into pre-mixed cocktails and a dedicated tequila brand with flavours including peanut butter and fruit tingle. You heard right. So sit back as Renee shares how she's gone about building this empire, along with how she's in recent years raised $3.7 million through equity crowdfunding and why she did it, and how she got her hot sauce brand featured on Hot Ones, one of the biggest YouTube channels of all time. It's got about 59 million subscribers or something ridiculous like that. As always, you'll find a video snippet from this interview that I feel is super interesting over at patreon.com forward slash marketing podcast. Enough from me. Let's go and say g'day to Renee. Renee Bunster, welcome back to the Small Business Big Marketing Podcast. Oh, sorry. (laughs) 
trick. Was that a trick question? <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, he's going to do the intro now. Yeah, <laughs> start again. No way, mate. We're in. There's oh. no starting again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now tell me, you had you're on the show 250 episodes ago, which equates to about five years, 50 episodes a year. At that point. You were selling eight thousand dollars worth of shit the bed hot chili sauces a day. The business has changed a little bit. Yeah. How's it going? Yeah, so that was so I obviously caught your attention because of an amazing headline I got where we got to number one on Amazon in the USA and just started making a shit ton of money off Amazon in the USA. Um business has totally changed since then. We realized that there was a a cap. Yeah, we reached a cap of how many people want to eat a product called shit the bed. There's only so many people who want to eat that. So we had to make a range of supermarket style sauces. You know, we sort of, I went to the supermarket shelf and went, right, if we're ever going to end up in Woolworths, we need to make something that appeals to the mass market. So we've done that. We went and did that. We made those sauces in about 2021 and now we're in Woolworths. Whoop, whoop. So yeah, whoop, whoop. So, um, you know, r- revenue up and down, depending on things that are happening, you know, like I wish I could say $8,000 a day, but then if I actually crunch the numbers, I'm like, oh yeah, we actually kind of do that now. Well, I you hope know? you're doing more than that now. You're doing yeah. that five years ago. Must be, must be. <laughs> but well, that, that $8,000 a day, that was like, oh, that was just for about four days, you know? <laughs> Don't let the truth get in the way of a good story. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I, I'm I'm a tad confused. So let's just be clear: the company has made some significant growth shifts since we last spoke. We're going to talk about the fact that you've introduced a tequila range, which is incredible. Um, but shit, the bed, the 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 the, the chili sauces are going beautifully. Getting into Woolies, that was a big deal, and. It's no mean feat. You're in Woolies WA, sort of on trial at the moment. Um, yeah. what, what, what was what was the and, and I've spoken to like Daniel Flynn from Thank You Water at the time. Daniel flew helicopters outside the boardrooms of Coles and Woolies with a banner saying, "Please stock us." What was your secret sauce to doing it? Excuse wow. the pun. Wow, wow, I know. What is the secret sauce? We uh, we ha- we actually chatted it. A- to them for about two years. Oh, um, we, we were chatting to Coles and Woolies at the same time and it's just meeting after meeting, building rapport, them getting to know you. I mean, you can tell them that your source is the best till the cows come home, yeah, but what it comes down to with those big boys in this grocery category is money. How much margin can they put on it? How much can they get it off you for? So if your numbers don't stack up, then they're never going to give you a shot. Hmm. And then when they do... You know, it's all up to you. You've got to pay for shelf space. You know, it, it, it's out to me. And I don't know, I've never been an FMCG guy. Even when I was in advertising, I sort of steered away from the cereals and the chocolate bars because it feels very complicated to me and it yeah. feels incredibly difficult. And managing their expectations just seems, to the small business owner like you, does it yeah. ever feel overwhelming? Um, when you have to come up with a marketing plan. So a lot of people think, yay, you're in Woolies. Oh, job done. Yeah. Pack up and go home. No, actually, that's what you had to present to them before you would even get in is what are you going to do if we put you on the shelves? So they've given us a shot in WA, which is just 100 Woolies stores. So it's really annoying that we can't roll out these nationwide marketing campaigns, like getting on that podcast or using that influencer because – He's going to, you know, this influencer is going to say, hey, use this hot sauce and half the country can't run out to Woolies and buy it, only people in WA. So we are doing loads of local radio, um, Ah. you know, obviously Facebook advertising because it's really geo-targeted. Yeah, really getting into radio stations over here because, you know, people still listen to the radio in the car. They do. Don't get me started on radio. I think it's one of the great mediums that will not go away. TV, yes. And I want to talk to you about the fact that you are on a on a you are on a big TV show at the moment, um, food sports. But um, let's (laughs) let's come to that. Radio is not going anywhere. What what fascinates me? I did watch the blokes and the girls who were looking after FMCG brands at the advertising agency I was at many decades ago. They had to prepare these trade brochures and show the buyers at Woolies or Coles. Oh, you know, this is our TV flighting. We've got this outdoor camp. Pain. We've got this and that. Very, very expensive. The, the media landscape has fragment, fragmented a lot these days and, you know, we have to work harder to get the same attention. Did you have to quote a certain figure? Oh, yeah, we're going to be spending half a million dollars on Bunster's hot sauces in the next six months or yeah, we did. what did that look like? We did actually. Rather than just coming up with this arbitrary number, it was more, okay, this podcast, 
that'll be 10 grand, but that hits your target demo. And then this one here will be five grand. So you say all this stuff, you mm. don't necessarily have to do it. And what we've found <laughs> at W. <laughs> and, and hello to all you buyers yeah. at Coles and Woolies listening. Hi, guys. Uh, well, we haven't had to pull out those guns yet. We call it, we, in, we always talk about like how many guns have you got? What guns can you pull out, you know, and blow them away? Like, you know, in Terminator, how we just always had a, another gun handy. Um, we haven't had to pull out any massive guns like that yet in WA because people are pulling it off the shelves because it's something new and different. And like our units per store per week is through the roof, but that's because everybody in WA knows us. It could be a different story when we go nationwide. But yeah, radio, they are desperate. They are radio, desperate. Radio for stations, they yeah. always are. They'll, they, yeah. you know, they're, oh, it's <laughs> tough out there and this and that. But no, I think that's, uh, I mean, Radio done well is theatre of the mind, and I just think it's a wonderful, wonderful medium that enough, not enough businesses use. And I'm, I'm advertising's a tough one. You know, it's you spend that money on the thirty second ad, that money's gone, right? There's no, you're not, you're not. Well, you're building a bit of brand equity, but you need frequency, you need reach, you need multi station buyers. It's complicated, but um, but good on you for having a crack. You, you've done some interesting things with the hot sources, and I want to. There's a few areas I want to cover, right? So right. just stick with me here. And there, this is in no particular order. I'm going to talk about the elephant in my room right now, Renee, and I'm holding up a bottle of your spicy ketchup, which, as yeah. you can see, I have used. I absolutely love this. Thank you for oh, sending gosh. it over. No um, worries. Um, what is it called? Um, cash for comment. Um, but, <laughs> but, uh, it's but a good one, yeah. The elephant in the room is the bottle. It worries me. I feel like, and, and for, for listeners playing along at home, it's. How, can you describe the shape of the bottle? I'm not very good at that kind of stuff. So it's, it is. So that was the. the it's first, like a genie bottle. You think it's a genie bottle? It's actually based on a Dom Perignon champagne bottle. So all the mass is down the bottom. So when I go to pour it, you know what happens? It what all happens? bloody comes out on my toast. And too much of it. Oh. Have you not had? Have you not had someone tap you on the shoulder? And Maybe it's that one. Maybe that one's just a little bit too watery. Oh, you gave me the, you gave me the yeah. um, expiring stock, did you, or something? Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. Th- thanks for that. Well, it was very nice. Oh, it's delicious, that spicy ketchup. <laughs> and actually, we, we're we actually, that's an interesting thing we're doing. So Woolies has taken four of our skews, uh, the original green and gold, spicy mustard, and pretty hot, which is like shit the bed light, Um but they haven't, so, and we've got spicy ketchup up our sleeve. Say if one, so this is a hot tip for anyone who gets into Woolies, always have another gun to pull out. If they say spicy mustard's not selling as well, we're going to delete it. You go, oh, yeah. don't, don't, we don't want to lose our space. Here's spicy ketchup. So we've got that up our sleeve yeah. for if we get a deletion notice. Because, ah, yeah. I like that. Because you like it. Everyone likes that. Oh, it's great. I, well, anyway, you don't have an answer to my bottle. I don't mean to be negative oh. either, by the way. I'm not I'm not digging them. But, but I did interview a fellow about six months ago. He was the owner of Ferndale Foods, a big supplier. In fact, their biggest brand is Jolly Mints, J-O-L-I Mints, your little mints in a box. He'd spend a lot of time and energy and resources with his packaging. The little yes. click it makes when you open the lid, the mints fall into a little tray. It's, it's the size of a matchbox, so it's quite tactile. Anyway, I'm quite interested in packaging and um, oh, so and, and, am I. Yeah, that was yeah, that was our first big decision in the business was w- in order to stand out on the shelf, you have to stand out. You can't just be in the same 150 yes. mil bottle as everyone else or the same 250 mil off the shelf bottle. So the first the first crowdfunding campaign I did was to design the bottle and I was just sitting there on a beach in India just going, "What should the bottle be? What should the bottle be?" <laughs> We are the champagne of hot. It's got to be a champagne bottle. Oh, so what's clever. the most iconic like champagne that. bottle? And it was the Dom Perignon. Now I can see and that. And I'm sorry that you're not very familiar, you know, with using yeah, no, a no, Dom no. bottle. Just a bit of Great Western Spumanti for me uh, <laughs> is, is, is absolutely fine, Renee. <laughs> Tell me, um, the, the idea for Bunster's hot sauces came to you on a hammock in middle of, uh, in South Mexico. America or Mexico. Yeah. Now you're on the bloody beach in India coming up with ideas for bottles. Do you, do you, when you need an idea, do you just take off to some exotic location? Is that how it works? Absolutely. <laughs> now, you were on one of my favourite YouTube ch- Well, your your product was on one of my favourite YouTube <gasps> channels, Hot Ones. Yes. This It's a favourite for a couple of reasons. For those who haven't watched it, this bloke, I don't know who he is, but he can get anyone to come and have chicken wings and chilli sauces with him. He has 10 rows of chicken wings. He has 10 bottles of chilli sauces, one starting at the very low Scoble rating, the other one at the other, number 10 off the charts. He asks a question between bites and he gets anyone from Will Ferrell to you know, Hollywood A-listers, politicians, anyone. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. And yeah. your sauce 
was one of the hot sources on that yeah. show, which gets tens of millions of views. How did that come about? Yeah, okay, so now you're asking the questions that get back to the core of your show, which is small business, big marketing, because that was a great marketing gorilla. We, uh, sure was. How did we get on there? I found out who was the guy who picked the sources and put them on the show, and we just started love bombing that guy. Oh, you're good. And we even sent him loads of free sources. But this was back in the early days. I mean, that show's huge now. Huge. This was in 2018. So we were one of the first companies to get on there, and uh, we love bombed him. We started sending him all of our sources and said, look, just put this on your shelves, see if people like it. And I just kept getting feedback from the people who worked in the shop that your source is my favourite, your source is my favourite. And so we just said, come on, mate, give us a shot. But we had to, sadly, take it out of that bottle that you hate and put it into a 150 mil bottle because their oh, whole yeah. way of making money out of that show is subscription boxes. Ah, that fit I didn't know that. Bottles of, yeah, they're up to like, so when they when I got on, it was 10,000 bottles of sauce. He said, I need 10,000 bottles of sauce in two weeks in New York. And I was like, ah! now. He's asking for 60,000 bottles of sauce. You crunch the numbers on that, they are making a killing. So you provided 10,000 bottles of sauce in a unique bottle just for him. Um, yeah. and you made that happen in the two weeks. Can you think was the art can you measure the ROI? Um that honestly, sales-wise, we didn't make loads of sales. No. You know, anyone would think, oh, your, your black label sales in America are going to boom. They didn't because he bought the 10,000 bottles and everybody bought them off him. Uh -huh. He knows what he's doing. Um, but for us, that was more a strategic play in getting credibility. So you know how in America, uh, in Australia, if you're successful in America, Ooh, oh, oh, yeah, that yeah, must yeah. be good. And it got yeah. us massive kudos. And that was one of the things that helped us to get a national distributor because it's just this really slow game of chess in food. Have you thought about doing a Hot Ones? Now, you, you wouldn't do a, a copy of Hot Ones for Australia, although I think there should be one, but that wouldn't work for you because obviously there's nine other competitive brands sitting on that table as these people have an interview. But chili, it's funny. It's a funny thing, chili. It lends itself to cleverness, to cheekiness, to, you know, people don't take it too – they take it seriously – but you can have a lot of fun with its marketing, I think, is where I'm getting to. Yeah. Have you thought about doing some kind of show or YouTube channel with your product? Do you know what? Do you know what? I have. We have started uh, we've started filming some YouTube videos because I have a background in media and TV and whenever I put any video of myself up, people are just like, we want to see more of you. So I'm starting a YouTube channel of me like cooking recipes because I can't cook. Excellent. I'm like the worst cook. So people want to see me ruin food in the kitchen. So that's what we're doing. But you've given me an idea. Good. Um, Hang on, I'm just getting, my just getting my invoice book out. Just keep going. Yep. <laughs> I should I should do it. I've, you know, I've got eight hot sauces in my lineup. I could do I could do an eight eight wing lineup with my own sauces now, Tim. Why wouldn't I could you? do it? I Why just think I? It, it's such it, it just makes sense to me. I, it, interesting people saying they love seeing you. This is a big lesson for any yeah. business owner. And particularly, you're an FMCG. You're a supermarket product, and all of, and hardly anyone puts their face to a product. Paul Newman did, and it went gangbusters for his for his spaghetti sauces. I just think it's a it's an underutilized strategy. And every every I don't know if you have got Frank Walker from Bargain Tiles over in WA, he puts his <laughs> he puts his voice to radio. I just think it makes sense for an owner to stick their head above the trench and say, hey. It's me you're buying off. Yeah, that's when it really turned around for me. So I was making sauce 2012, 2013. I didn't put a video of myself or show my face until about two and a half years of working behind the scenes. And everybody, and you come from a television media background. What? Why? I'm just not a fame whore. I'm, I, you know, I, I'm not a fame whore. I'm not like, hey, everyone, look at me, give me likes, you know. And I'm, I'm but, not sure about that, Renee. I don't know you that well, but you know, it's. It's been a while. It's been 10 years. That's where the money's at, Tim. So I'm like, fame whore over here. I've got a show <laughs> yeah, with Gordon Ramsay. Right. Yeah, I'll go on your show. Yeah. Anything. Anything. Yeah. And we're going to come to that. Now, tell me, yeah. another thing I love um, is your email campaign or your EDMs that you send out. Your subject lines are, are quite compelling. If I could just read three of them. Oh, no. Uh, in no oh, particular no. order. I just went to my, um, you know, my inbox and what Spam. Renee sent me. Um <laughs> First subject line I came across, Renee, was, and I quote, 
I watched a show called My Massive Cock. <laughs> Got um, a few unsubscribes after that one. <laughs> uh, but I did. <laughs> It's, well, hold, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, and 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 what? So what? In regards to chili sauce, was was uh, where's the relationship? There is none. It's Good. just what I've done this week. What I've done this week because people just want to hear from me, and uh, and my husband always says, "Come on, come up with an email. Come up with an email." I haven't done anything. Oh no, hang on. I did watch that show, and. Have you ever stopped to think about how hard life is? I mean, you probably already know. You already <laughs> would know, Tim. Guys with massive schlongs, they can't go jogging, you uh, know. They can't too, have a shower at the gym without their friends get, ripping shit on them. Like, so, you know. so what? just to explain to listeners that, so that it, they're quite lengthy emails. They had photos. They had dialogue. They had observations. And at the end, you know, after kind of scrolling through five screens, there's a banner ad for the chili sauces, which I thought yeah. was actually, actually genius because your other option to the great unwashed business owner is to go send an email out going, hey, buy my chili sauce, it's really tasty. Yeah. Big, big deal. Whereas you've yeah. got, let me let me read a couple of other oh, email no. headlines, Renee, if I may. Oh. We've got rid of the hardest one, excuse the pun. <laughs> um, what happened to the bear that ate 34 kilograms of cocaine? Another yeah. email headline. Yeah. Um, yep. And the, the other one, the real truth about koalas, <laughs> you know, like this, is, <laughs> which I thought was quite funny. They all have chlamydia. They all have chlamydia and they're, they're 90% of the time stoned off their, their tits. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, eating the gum leaves. So good luck to them. So I, I, I just thought it was worth highlighting that EDM strategy because, again, I get we all get so much spam. And you, you it isn't spam. You shouldn't have said spam before. You look in my spam box because it's not. I know that's oh. probably where you – sometimes business owners' heads are, oh, you know, no, I'm filling up the box with crap. I shouldn't do email. I actually think email's alive and well because everyone's over on social media. Yeah. Well, you get to look at it at work. And so, yes. so a hot tip in my email is I put in the Facebook post of the week, Instagram post of the week, anything that, you know, got super likes and uh, lots of comments, I'll stick that in. So you kind of get your little so- social media fix yes. while you're checking your email at work. You know, Jenny from accounts thinks that you're, uh, <laughs> you know, you're just looking at your spreadsheets, but actually you're looking oh, at no, dick she's not. Yeah. She's looking at uh, My Massive <laughs> Cock, which was the name of the show, Renee, yeah. not, uh, you know what I'm saying there? Yeah. Capital. <laughs> Capital M, capital M, capital C. Now, Renee, let's move on. Before we leave hot sauces, you have, and you've crowdfunded for both the hot sauces and the tequila. Um, you used Birchall, which we had, um, what was the fellow's name from Birchall that we had? Matt Vitale, one of the, yeah. the co-founders of Birchall, as, a, as an equity crowdfunding um, owner. You went down that path a few times. How's it gone? Yeah, we have done three raises on ECF, which is pretty rarefied air. A lot of companies sort of raise once or they try and raise again and it tanks. Um, yeah, first one we raised $2 million, next one $1 million, and then this one we got six fifty, dollars um, which, like, it is the toughest time to try and convince people to invest in a business mm. where with a non-liquid asset um, just because everyone's mortgages have gone through the roof. But, you know, people's mortgages have tripled. So the fact we got 650 um, this one, so I think that adds up to about 3.9, 3.7, 3.9. What did you have to give away to get close to 4 mil? Uh, equity. I think yeah. I think we've uh, we've I think we still own about sixty percent of the company, so we've sold about forty percent. But it's really just given us the leg up, and also all of the ambassadors that we need to propel this thing. So a, a lot of my marketing is word of mouth. I can just send something out to my well, I've got nearly three thousand investors, and they they do the work for me. So that that's honestly a really good marketing tip: is don't think about what you're giving away. Think about what you're getting. It's not just the money, but it's the rabid ambassadors for your brand. So you've now got three thousand micro investors who yeah. you have to. Do you have to manage them? I communicate with them. So every month I will send them a video, so they get to see my face. I say we've been doing this, 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 and this. We never talk about things that are happening because there's always like fifty things, fifty irons in the fire. But we wait until things have happened, and we say this has come through, and this has come through, and this has come through, and they love that. And that is how you can go back to them with your cap in your hand and say, "Hey guys, can I get some more money?" But if you don't communicate with them, yep. and I've seen this, I've seen this, I've seen businesses go on on virtual, raise a heap of money then come back a year or two later, try and raise again, and nothing happens. And it's nothing because happens. they didn't, didn't you, well, nurture their audience. Hey, market, marketing 101, communicate. So what's your communication with your investors? Oh, I just saw a show called My Massive Cock. What do you think? <laughs> 
No, I'm not allowed to do that to them. Um, I have to respect their time. Um, of course. No, I'll just say, hey, guys, this is uh, this is where we're at. Uh, you know, this month we've just picked this up. We're going to this trade show. We're doing this. It's facts. It's it's really facts and uh, what's going on behind the scenes. Get to peek behind the curtains and they love it. Mm. You know, talk to them. You did say pre-interview that the equity crowdfunding market is struggling, not only because of economic reasons, but because um, history has shown that there are business owners out there that go and raise equity, get the dough in the bank and then disappear. So it's giving it a bit of a bad name. Is that something yeah. that you've seen? I, I don't think it's, uh, you can't say giving it a bad name. It's more the fact that these investors who, who are everyday mums and dads, they bought into a story, they saw a really cool video, they're like, I'm going to support them because I believe in that. And then within a year or two, that business has either collapsed or they couldn't get more funding. And so these investors are like, what do you mean I've lost all my money? What do you mean? But, but you, but you know, mm. like mums and dad investors don't, don't understand the equity crowdfunding campaigns. You're going to have to invest in 20 and maybe one will do well. So that's why you've got to choose one that's already got traction and it's not just someone's dream. I think a mm. lot of people, like, they, they buy into these amazing videos, like, oh, yeah, that's going to change the world, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang yeah, on. Yeah. What, do you, what do you mean? You've completely done a pivot and you're not doing that. And, but, uh, and so all of those investors get burned and they go away. It's kind of like ever invested in the stock market thinking you had a hot tip. Yeah. You know? Good luck. How many times have you done that? You're the last to know when that happens, that's for sure. <laughs> So COVID comes along, uh, you can't export your hot sauces to the world. You have observed, like everyone else, that the likes of George Clooney, Justin Timberlake, P. Daddy, Michael Jordan, to name a few, have got into tequila and made literally a billion dollars. Yeah. Now there's Bunster's tequila. What was the thinking? Tell me about the day you and hubby were sitting around the kitchen table going, Dale, I think Tequila is our next move. Well, actually, it was ready to drink cocktails. We were sitting on a beach in Broome, <laughs> and I was of going. Was. I was on. A, it was on a beach. Of course, I wasn't around a kitchen table. It was on a beach, and I was like, "These ready to drink cocktails are not cocktails at all. They're all bloody seltzers. They're all just water with flavour. Why isn't anyone making an actual decent cocktail in a can?" So we got into uh, ready to drink cocktails. And so I didn't send you any. That's why you're not talking about them. No, Sorry. I didn't. I've just so, got some lovely little minis of tequila sitting in front of me. Peanut butter flavour, fruit zingle. One one has potentially a witchetty grub in it if you were an investor. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so when we made those cocktails, we had a heap of, uh, we actually made our own tequila. We imported the agave cactus from Mexico, uh, just, um, fermented it, distilled it, and then we were making margaritas with it and we actually had a heap left over and uh, I decided to do something fun with it, which is <laughs> yeah. flavoured tequilas uh, because that, I honestly believe that the real value in this company will be in creating an alcoholic beverage that can be bought and sold, you know, like, you know, say a Lion Nathan could buy it or a yeah. Diageo could buy it and they don't really buy uh, a range of cocktails. You know, they, they could buy, buy a whole company but... Um, it's more, you know, assets like, say, Midori. You know, no one drinks mm -hmm. Midori, but do you know how much that drink is worth because it's just ubiquitous in bars all over the world because no one else makes a Midori mm -hmm. or a Kahlua or a Baileys, you know, drinks like that. So that's actually where my focus is going in future because we've got these spirits. So the, so what you've got in front of you, these tequilas, if you're going to, like, neck some <laughs> at the, in the middle of the day, is different flavours. I just want to see with these what flavours do people like. Did you try them? I, I haven't yet, and I'm not going to neck it because I'm about to hop on my Vespa and go for a go somewhere after this interview. But I, you know, I'm looking at them. Beautiful packaging. Love the bottle, by the way. Yeah. And I think the flavours are. I don't know. I'm, I am looking forward to trying them. I mean, fruit single, peanut butter, fireballs. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, that's exciting. You know what comes to mind, Renee, as we talk about this, and we talk about tequila, and we talk about these hot sauces. What fascinates me about you is that. 
you and hubby hubby works in the business we didn't mention that he's the what is he the coo oh he's just a shit kicker i think oh he's whatever whatever you yeah, want him to be i think we called him a ceo i don't know just- so what what fascinates me about you two is you just have the ability to make shit happen you know yeah. you're a journalist you're a journalist by trade but then you go and start a, a chili sauce brand and then you mix cocktails and can them now you've got a tequila range i just that's pretty impressive. Like, have you always, have you just got this, I mean, is it, a, is it an ADHD thing? Is it a just never sit down? You know, I guess I've got so many ideas, I cannot not bring some to market. What's that look like in your head? I think I have self-diagnosed myself with ADD for sure. Join that uh, club. Th- yeah, I know. I know. How good is ADD? I, <laughs> but I'm actually told to not pursue this and not pursue that. I, I could do a million different things. And I actually grew up watching my mum do it. Now I can see ah. ADD is totally hereditary. Um, Entrepreneur mum or just she just had, she was always doing stuff? Yeah, actually. In their later years, after they quit their jobs, they started a winery. And so I watched them run a winery into the ground <laughs> and, you know, while my hot sauce business is like booming and they're making chilli wine and just not marketing it properly and, yeah, it was mm. very painful to watch. But, they're, you know, they're happy. But um, we can just do anything because we understand how things are made. For people sitting on the outside, you're like, how the hell do you make a tequila that tastes like fruit tingle lollies? Oh, it's easy. Why do you understand th- how things are made? Again, you you're a journalist. Hubby is a management consultant by trade. What, what did you have a side hustle of of studying manufacturing or something? Oh, no, nah, it's probably the last 11 years of running this business, Tim. Right. Right. <laughs> so, so I didn't know shit in the beginning, but you know, so when we got into cocktails, the learning curve of getting into making ready to drink cocktails and there were so many that we made. We made 14 different cocktails just to see which ones would stick, which ones would work because people can tell you that they want a Bloody Mary till the cows come home, but how many times in a week, month, year do you actually drink a Bloody Mary? True, true. You know, and so we I, I have produced the best Bloody Mary in a can. I called it a Bloody Karen. I got all this international <laughs> media <laughs> for <laughs> it. Who's buying them? No one because mm. you, nobody wants to drink six Bloody Marys on a Saturday night. Nope. But they want to do ten shots of, of tequila. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And so mm-hmm. this is this is what we've learned. And I was like, yeah, the cocktails are great because we've created something that nobody else is doing. We do a mango daiquiri, a passion fruit daiquiri, a gin and juice, grapefruit gin and juice, and cosmopolitan. Oh, that's one of my faves. Which, yeah. And I, I didn't know that cosmopolitans were so amazing. It was our customers saying, make a cosmo, make a cosmo. Mm. So we made this cosmo and now it was a bestseller. So, but through doing that, we learned. Where is the actual money at? Oh, what's the easier part? Do you know what? Spirits don't go off, Tim. Yeah. I can make a shit ton of this stuff and just let it sit on the shelf <laughs> for 10 years and it might actually get better in the bottle. So so you are doing you're doing the tequila one to sell. You are doing with fingers crossed, hopefully a, a distiller comes along and 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 buys it up for for a big price. I, I like that thinking. Do you do you follow um past guest John Warrillow? He wrote the book um Built to Sell. New York Times Ooh, bestseller. Yes. Absol- absolute cracker. Oh, you're reaching for it, are you? Oh, I know. We've got that book. Actually, we just threw all our books out on the weekend. <laughs> oh, it's a cracker. <laughs> it's such a beautifully simple, yeah. it, 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 and he's written the book. It's it's fictional. So he uses a, he actually, by coincidence, uses a marketing agency, the owner of a marketing agency, who's just not doing very well at all until he focuses his interest in logo development. Once he decides on that as the idea, the value proposition for the business, the book covers the 17 things that you need to do to get your business in a position to sell. And often what happens, he says, is you love the business so much because all the systems and processes and the branding and everything's in place. It's like, I don't want to sell this. I bloody love it. Yeah. Or you sell it for, you know, you optimise the price because all the ducks are in a row. Yeah. I think that's really sad and I think you need to look at people who are, you know, for instance, like Janine Ellis is now yes. on TV and yep. running courses because they've sold out a boost, you know, and what do you do when it's been your whole life and your baby? I don't want to go bloody do reality TV shows for the rest of my life, you know, and I think about that a lot. I always think about my future and there's a lot of people like, oh, we've got to build this up to sell it, but I'm like, what, what will I do 
if if we sell this, I think I would always want to keep a hand in it and to keep creating and to help be the voice of the brand. I don't think I would, I would ever sell all of it or sell out, you know, and go and play golf. What part of the business or p- what part of business do you love the best? Um, creating. I yeah. am a creator. So, I thought so. Yeah, the creator. I'm not the organiser, I'm the creator. So all of the creating. So for me, yeah, when we're creating video content, silly ads, um, creating products, creating branding, creation. Um, yeah, it's, it's beautiful to hear because so many business owners shy away from that. I'm not creative. You know, that's for other people. But it is such a it's such a wonderful part. And it could be creative accounting. It could be creative headline writing. It could be creative product development. It's... You know, I think we, we, we need to celebrate that more. I come Coming from an advertising background, creativity used to be left to the people on the creative floor, the art directors and the graphic designers or the copywriters, and I hated that because I think we're all creative. Yeah, I, I've stumbled across this this bloke. Uh, have you heard of Malfi Gin? You ever bought Malfi Gin? No. Malfi Gin, uh, if you're not into gin. but I am. I've, Oh, you are? I've never bought a bottle of gin in my life and now I buy Malfi gin whenever I need a bottle of gin. Why? There's grapefruit flavour, there's lemon flavour, there's aranciato flavour and it looks like it comes from Italy and it's really nice packaging. And I was like, who the fuck made this? There's not Mm. enough info on this and I dug into it. One bloke in his basement in New Jersey came up with the whole thing, (gasps) with the, the packaging, the branding, everything, and then he went to Italy and went, eh, you can make it. So, it, you know, it has that denomination. It comes from, from Italy, uh, but, like, anyone could have made it. And, yeah, the, and I yeah. read that story and I was like, I can do that. If I sit down and think about it, I could do that. So that's... And, and sometimes yeah. those ideas happen, <clears throat> like I met maybe when you came up with the hot sauces with Shit the Bed, did the name, was the name sort of one of the early things that you came up with? Because then that sets the tone for it everything totally, else. totally... Yep, you, you're right. I, I always forget about this, that people had been saying, make a hot sauce, make, make it hotter, make it hotter, make it hotter. And I came up with the name first. And I was like, all right, well, if I'm going to make one hot, I'm going to call it shit the bed. And I just kept telling people, t- kept telling customers, how about I make one called shit the bed? And they would just lose it laughing. <laughs> and for a year I was like, oh, I've got to get around to that. Got to get around to that. Got to get around to that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then as soon as I made it, <laughs> photo yeah. went viral. Well, and- it, it sits, you know, and sometimes when you name something or come up with a tagline or an idea, it does set the scene and the whole story unravels and you go, oh, okay, now that's how I'm going to – you work your way backwards. It's like I had um, Colin Breyer who was um, Jeff Bezos's right-hand man. They call him Jeff's Shadow and he wrote the book called Working Backwards, which is the whole Amazon premise of we start, we, we start with the press release of the finished product or service that goes out to everyone and then – if that gets traction, and obviously the product or service at this point has not been created, just the press release has been written and they work back. And, um, again, you know, coming up with an idea and then figuring out how to get it to market that way it seems to be a fun and smart way of doing it. I love that. I actually, because, Do you know what? I think that's how I've been successful as, as well because I come from that journalistic background. I think, are they going to write about this? Yes. What are they going to say about it? What is remarkable about this? If you can't get the mainstream press to write about your current product and service, you're fucked (laughs) Mm. because they will write about anything. 100%. Yeah, well, you know. Yeah. Oh, nowadays, God, bloody, we've got a a website in Perth called uh, Perth Now and it's just all TikTok lady shows boobs. Yeah. Is a mum. Not, (laughs) you know, OnlyFans. Anyone on OnlyFans? It's just like every. Just, yeah, you know, the yeah. media has, I do not do not know what's happened to the media recently, but. Well, it be, it, because there's so much of it, I think, and, you know, we, I guess I'm part of it, you're looking for stories, but some just don't have any standards. And as you say, you know, Perth Now, that's not your site. You're saying there's a website in Perth. A website, Perth yeah. <clears throat> and, you know, the OnlyFans or the mum with three boobs or whatever it may be is the, head, <laughs> is the big headline. And unfortunately, it, you know, it gets opened, it's clickbait and. It's sad. I would, I would subscribe to the channel of the woman with three boobs. Well, I there would. you go. I take back what I said. It's actually yeah. a really strategically smart decision yeah. to go with. <laughs> I would. Any anyone looking for an edge out there on your OnlyFans, go get a third <laughs> boob installed just in the middle, and you've got my five bucks a month. I'd love to interview the OnlyFans founder. I don't know who that is, but I don't imagine that they intended it to be what it is today. 
I think it started off a bit like Patreon. I've got a Patreon, yes. you know, and it was a way yeah. of supporting creators. Yeah. I, I think what happened with OnlyFans is guys and girls took hold of it and sort of become a soft porn site. Yeah. I see I don't get on there. I don't wanna I don't I don't have the time. Um there's no one that I want to see more of, except, you know, my own family maybe. Um, is there actual porn going on on OnlyFans? Oh, I, I thought the way, because you mentioned it, um, yeah, there is. that's all it is. Well, that, I shouldn't say that. I don't know that for sure. That's it. No one way- knows, Tim. None of us, are, we're, we're not willing to, to stump up the five bucks to go have a look. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's this mystery. Whenever I've heard of it mentioned, it is in the context of, yeah, a, a, a guy or girl making a bloody good income um, by, you know, getting their gear off versus, you know, starting an e- e-commerce store selling hot chilli sauce. But, uh, yeah. you know, horses for courses. But I would, it would be an interesting interview because um, it's now, I'm sure it's a billion-dollar brand. So tequila-wise, you've got that. You've got the mixed cocktails. You've got the, the hot chili sauces. Are you sitting on just a mountain of ideas, Renee, and trying not to action them? Yes, trying not to tell you about them because mm. <laughs> my husband's like, don't mention that, don't tell him that, don't tell anyone that. <laughs> but, uh, but for for me, I'm more, you know, I'm just always sniffing out uh, who's making money and how, and can I do that? So, for instance, I could I could make a shit ton of money on OnlyFans if I'm, you know, prepared to. You know, do that, but I'm not going to. But mm. it, instead, how can I use all of this know-how from uh, FMCG and consumer and, and coming up with things that I can brand and sell? So I'm going to read those books you've told me, Built to Sell and Working Backwards. I've heard of, I pr- honestly, probably great. have them. I'll, I'll put a yeah. link in the show notes to those interviews as well. Does, does they, therefore your approach, you're creative, got a bit of ADHD, you are always looking for the next big thing, do you do that at the detriment of three brands and businesses that you already have? Should you not just go, hang on, put the brakes on, let's go deep on what we've got instead of trying to constantly look for the next big thing? Yeah, spoiler alert, that's what Gordon Ramsay just kept yelling at me when I went on the show. (laughs) Spoiler alert, um, the hot sauce, happy to say that the hot sauce, I compare it to like, you know, at first it was a gas guzzling land cruiser that we had to put heaps of fuel into and then and then we converted it to a hybrid and now it is a Tesla that's just like running off the sun, you know. Nice. Um, we don't have to put loads of energy into the hot sauce. Enough people know it. Um, so that's not getting – the only thing that, that needs a bit more fuel in the tank would be the cocktails, but – until you can get, and this is the other thing I've learned about the alcohol industry, until you can get a major like, a, you know, a Liquorland or a BWS or a dance to go, boom, you're nationwide, um, it's so hard to get it distributed because that, distrib- you know, the distributor wants his finger in the pie as well and in alcohol yep. there's just not the margin. It just ends up making a product on the shelf because at the end of the day people in the bottle shop, they're like, mm, I just want to get pierced. Uh, yeah. which one's going to do it for me for the least amount of money? And we've created these, these um, uh, you know, top shelf cocktails. We've got to convince people to buy them. Yeah. And I don't think we'll be able to afford to do that on the shelves until you, you get a major interested. Although we are in first choices. We've got into first choices nice. over east, mm-hmm. slowly spreading across the country. Um, yeah. But, no, the, the spirits, and that's the other thing that people don't understand. You look at the, the tequila and any other alcohol I might do in future and think, that looks expensive. It's actually not. It's actually not. It's actually mm. way more expensive to do other things. Interesting. Mm. Well, I'm, I'm an investor in liars, non-alcoholic spirits. And, oh, fantastic. You know, talk about margin. That's good margin because you don't have the excise. You don't have yeah. all, the, all the – it's essentially cordial. Oh, my God. I, I love – there. Whenever I go through a phase of not drinking, God, I love their 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 cans. They're and good, that's aren't they? okay. So that's one one thing I've been shouted down about, Tim. Whenever I go through a non drinking phase, uh, I always say, "Hey, how about we get into non alcoholic?" And everyone just screams at me. <laughs> it's a pimple on the bum of the alcohol industry, Renee. No, no. Wow. So that is one thing that I've brought mm. to the table, and everyone's just said, "No fucking way." Well, it's a generational change, though. You got to look at the younger guys coming through, where it's expensive to go out these days. Not like you, you know, I going out back in the day where. You know, well, I'm older than you, but it was it wasn't it wasn't expensive to go and have a few beers. Now, yeah. I mean, it's it's ridiculous, and don't even mention mixed drinks or cocktails for you know the the the, the teens or the the twenty somethings. So they, you know, um, 
but they still want to walk around the bar or the wine bar with something fancy in their hand so they can have a liars non-alcoholic cocktail and for all intents and purposes it looks pretty cool um they're still so, just as expensive though that's what shits yeah, well, me yeah, that's sort of a, you can't control that. It's, yeah. it's expensive off the shelf. They're trying to position it as as a spirit. You know, if it was yeah. if it was ten bucks, unfortunately, um, <sighs> us humans don't see value in something that's cheap. I know. <laughs> yeah. So when I when I, I love heaps normal, heaps yeah. normal, uh, no alcohol beer, but they're they're still selling it for ten bucks. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Well, that's a that's a marketing. That's a, just a perception thing more than it, the fact that it costs a lot to make because it don't. Yeah, I, actually, no. See, this is the thing about Heaps Normal. It is brewed exactly like any other beer, but they just keep brewing it to brew the alcohol out. So they've gone through the exact same process, but then yeah, they don't okay. have to pay the excise on the yeah. on the yeah. alcohol. Well, so, liars, liars starts doesn't start being alcoholic. It starts from the don't even know what the word is. You know, the, the chemical. There's never been alcohol in it, which makes it yeah. good for for Middle Eastern countries. It makes it a kosher. Anyway, really? we're not here to talk about lies, Renee. Pretty interesting story. I, I love catching up with past guests and seeing where they're at. And you are, you are a shining light. You know, well done to you and hubby for for having a real crack. Yeah, thanks, mate. From your home, by the way. Yeah. I'm not talking to Renee in somebody fancy nah. corner mahogany office on the you know fifteenth floor. <laughs> You are working it from home. I love it. That's that's uh, you know I heard years ago Gary Vaynerchuk said, "Don't be fancy till you're fancy. Don't get fancy till you're fancy." And I was like, "What's he on about?" And he explained, you know, so many people they want to have the office with the car spot out the front that has their yeah, name yeah, on yeah, it, yeah. you know, and they just want this business so that all their all their staff oh, can I come see. there. Yeah. And I'm all like, I, I just want to work in my underpants from my dirty front room. <laughs> Stop copying me. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just I, I want to have a nice life yeah. with uh, minimal stress and yeah, running a yeah. business is really stressful. So we're just always looking for ways to keep costs down and why would I pay rent, you know? Oh, I think it's great. That's, I mean, Vaynerchuk gives me the shits, but I must say don't be fancy <laughs> till you're fancy is a great piece of advice because that's just all show and ego yeah. and, you know, it's not serving anyone but yourself because you feel like I feel good now because I've got a – Nice office with a nice car. Like get a get a nice business first, eh? Hey? Or uh, you know, here's an example. Um, you know, I would rock up to uh, a food show in my beat up old Falcon with scratches all down the side, and you know, unload all my hot sauce in this. Uh, let's call them a uh, um, cheese company. Fancy car decals on the side, number plates. You know, cheesy goes yeah, yeah, number yeah. plate. Unloading their cheese, and you know, guess who's still in business a few years later? <laughs> Not Love the it. cheesy go go people. Mm. Renee, can I direct people to bunstersworldwide.com? Is that where where they should go? Of course go to you can. Check yeah. you out in all your glory. And I'm not sure when you'll be putting this one up, but uh, in January. Uh, no, 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 this month. When will you? This month, December. Okay, in January, the tequilas, which we're not even allowed to call them tequilas, they are agave spirits, <laughs> uh, they will be online. Uh, with some better names that won't get us sued. Uh, nice. Even even had problems we called Fruit Zingle. Even the lawyer said, oof, too close to Fruit Tingle. Really? Close, too close to Fruit Tingle. And the fruit, the Lifesavers people bought the trademarks in every single category. So they're like, just just don't even call it Fruit Zingle because they you don't want to build up a, pr- a product and then have someone come along and say, uh, you've no. infringed our trademark. Hmm. Which my my friends have dingo hot sauce, and from the very beginning they were like, "Oh, we're just waiting to get a knock on the door one day." And I'm like, "Well, change it, you know, change it before you get big." Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's they, right. Avoid yeah. the pain. Avoid, you mm-hmm. know, pick your fights. Is the is the learning there? You know, sometimes yeah. you just got to capitulate. Other times you go, "Nah, sticking my heels in, and I'm gonna I'm gonna win this." But I can understand that, and you don't need that pain. There's plenty of other names, you know. Yeah, yeah, better ones. But we've got a better name than Fireballs. Good idea. <laughs> Bunstersworldwide.com. Renee Bunster, love your work. Inspiring stuff. Thanks for coming back on and uh, giving us an update. Thanks for having me, Tim. There you go, team. Renee Bunster of Bunsters Worldwide. What a goer. That's the big lesson there. Got an idea? Go for it. Hey, you can head over to the show notes to find links to the two past episodes I mentioned, the one with John Warrillow on how to build a business to sell. That was fantastic. 
and Jeff Bezos's shadow, Colin Breyer, on the working backwards philosophy that Amazon uses for getting only the best ideas to market. A couple of cracker interviews there. I'll also put a link to the Hot Ones YouTube channel in the show notes as well. If you'd like to watch that interview, then feel free to lash out and join my incredibly, embarrassingly expensive membership over at patreon.com forward slash marketing podcast, he says with tongue in cheek. The first seven days are free. Whoop, whoop. Hopefully, I'll see you on the inside. Righto, time for you to take action on what you've learned because ideas will remain exactly that without action. Please support the work I do for small business by joining my small business owner membership over at patreon.com forward slash marketing podcast. If you enjoyed today's ep, there is... 661 more chats with successful business founders over on your favorite podcast app, where I would lovingly ask you to hit subscribe as well, because it helps my ratings. Thank you. Big thanks to Sam Heathcote for editing this show and to in-house rock star Lockie Dolly for the music bed. Most importantly, though, a very, very, very big thank you to you for lending me your ears, for tuning in and for being the motivated business owner that you are. You are the wind beneath my wings. May your marketing be the absolute best marketing. Bye for now.